He's finished his shepherd's pie. Not all little, of it. He's had a little lie it down. It was delicious. Had a little nap. Yeah. <laughs> We've watched Paw Patrol. <laughs> and, he's, and he's with us. One of the UK's most famous comedians. And after four years, uh, Jack Whitehall is back on the road with his new stand-up show. But if touring the UK wasn't tough enough, Jack also is getting to grips with nappy changing, sleepless nights after welcoming his first little Stop baby. Oh, oh. Oh. Congratulations, Thank Jack. you very much. How, how is fatherhood? How is it treating you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I still feel like I'm very much in the trenches. It's uh, six and a half weeks in and uh, my uh, baby daughter is amazing and, uh, you know, uh, a gift, but it, it's also, yeah, it's quite oh, full on. Look at, that. Oh, look at Roxy, she looks amazing. Yeah. No, it's, um, oh. it's very overwhelming. That first night when everyone's so tired and everyone sleeps through and then you wake up the next morning and go, oh, my God, we've absolutely smashed this. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then the next day, the rest of your life starts. Oh, my God, and it is. And you get that, that when people did warn me that you have that weird honeymoon period where I, I found it was like the first week was just so amazing and it was so blissful and I was so overwhelmed. And then the minute the second week hit, I was, like, Googling boarding schools already. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it happened that quickly. Uh, but now I'm sort of... I think I've, I've you know... Second, second day, so I woke funny. up at, uh, like, four and I picked up my phone and I Googled, when does a baby sleep through? Because I was just like, I just need to know what I, what I need to <laughs> what I, need, I yeah. need to know when I'm going to get some sleep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so how's that going? Is, it, is, is the sleep... Getting better. Do you know what? For the last four or five days, she she was amazing and she was sleeping really well. And then I think it's like she knew that I was coming to do breakfast television, so she screamed the house down <laughs> for the whole of last night. So you've night. had so no like, sleep. I'm a little bit delirious. And, yeah. So was this oh, tour even through. supposed to happen, or did you just turn around to your partner and go, "I'm so going to like to get out of the house. <laughs> I've got some news. <laughs> going to be on tour for a little bit. Yeah, it just coincides with the sort of six weeks in period. Yeah. But um, and some of the dates that have been put in are quite sus as well because it's places like. Aberdeen and Scarborough that are all maybe that little bit further away from London and I look at these long car journeys that I used to dread and I'm like, I can just sleep in the back of the car for five hours. <laughs> yeah. So I think increasingly you're going to see me touring in some very remote yeah. destinations. In Sadly, the I'm in the Orkneys tonight, so yeah. we'll have to overnight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for three days. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the tour, because this is the first tour in four years, yeah. isn't it? Is it good to be back? Are you nervous? How are you feeling? Oh, I love it. I mean, I adore doing stand-up. I love being up on stage in front of a live audience and was so starved of it. And this tour has been incredible. And I've also been doing it over the course of the year. I had, uh, you know, some shows at the beginning of the year, uh, did these big arena shows in the summer, and then I've had to kind of, like, rewrite it and uh, add in a lot of new material about the arrival of Baby, and that's been nice as well, Aww. so to keep it fresh. When you do that, do you go back to the small theatres and do the whole... Like, cos so many great comedians do these tiny theatres and they'll just go and test the material and so you've been doing that yeah so I'm sort of mixing it up and I've got a couple of theatre shows this week and then uh doing some bigger shows towards the end of the year I'm doing Wembley in December which will be great that's, I mean, that's gonna be the last show um at the Wembley arena which will be amazing and do you prep for a for a big audience in a different way uh yeah definitely you have to just sort of prepare yourself that the laugh is going to be a little bit delayed um and and I feel like I've got quite good like you know, training for that. Like things like doing the Brits, where, yeah. you, um, although with the Brits, <laughs> you, you wait for the laugh and it never, <laughs> it never comes. comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so like, oh no, this is just it's the arena delay. delay. For a week. Oh no, no, no. It just, <laughs> it, it never arrived. <laughs> yeah. uh, so. We were talking about <laughs> tough audiences. You, you've got a really tough audience coming up. Roxy's family's come to oh, see yeah, you. Yeah. Are you nervous? How are you feeling about that? Because I bet you're telling stories about them. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it, and it's more so intimate stories about. Uh, Ro Roxy and our relationship, oh. and obviously that's all kind of fair game as a stand-up comedian. And you're like, oh yeah, no, it's fine. You know, I talk about these things in quite an indiscreet way, and it's fine. You know, I'm just telling strangers. But the minute it's her family, and then you're doing a routine, and you look out and you see like her aunt giving you like a death stare. Surely you've got some backup, though, Jack. Yeah, I think. You've got backup I'm material. A, yeah, there's definitely, but there's backup <laughs> material. There's get out of jail free jokes that you have to just chuck in there. And talk about your time on this morning when you met Vanessa. I, yeah, well, I don't know whether that. <laughs> the fact that me and Vanessa have a little, you know, a little bit of history is going to help. I think that might in any way exacerbate the situation. I'm so upset she's not here today. Uh, uh, will I'm you not, send her my love? I will send you. She's probably watching now. Do you want to... You... Do it down the camera. I got Say really emotional as well. I watched on Celebs Go Dating. Yeah. I know. I really want her to You're rooting love. for her, aren't you? I love her. Do you want to like, give her a message? anything. This is the thing that I've discovered. I know I do want to send her a message and it's that I love her. But I, I quiet everything. Right? I had this awful situation where just before baby was about to be born, I was watching an episode of Tipping Point 
and I started crying. <laughs> and I was crying at an episode of Tipping oh. Point because there was this woman that wanted to get enough money to pay for an airfare to go and visit her I, I sister in that. New Zealand. And the jackpot counter went down and I was like Gazza in Italia 90. <laughs> and then I had this awful moment where I was like, if I'm crying at that and I don't cry <laughs> at the birth <laughs> of my child, I am a monster. <laughs> but it was Did fine. you cry? I mean, I cried Did for like a solid bit? week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Do you like, I mean, like, with stand-up, you sort of the four years is quite a lot, obviously, with the pandemic, four years is quite a big break. Is it the thing, is it your first love, apart from your wife and your child? Is it your, <laughs> is it your first love that you always go back to, do you think, Stan? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I love acting and I love writing and, you know, being able to do lots of different things, but there's something about that experience of going and doing live comedy and then not really being, you know, necessarily much of a, a script or, or, you know, editorial constraints or a lawyer that's it's looking you, over all it? your checks. It's, it's just you, you and an audience. You can say whatever you like. Uh, and every show is slightly different. Every audience is slightly different and, and, and nothing really beats that. So I think that's why I always find myself sort of veering back towards doing stand-up. The nice thing for you as well is because you're a stand-up first, um, people know what they expect. Whereas some stand-ups, the, the stand-ups, and then so is it Brett Goldstein, the guy who's in Ted Lasso. And he's quite a racy, Amazing. like, quite a risky stand-up. And everyone sees him in Ted Lasso, and then they go and watch his comedy, and they're like, oh, it's quite full-on. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, that's yeah. who I am. Well, I had one woman in America that came to see my show, and she was waiting outside afterwards, and she was like, um, I came to see you because I had seen you in Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> Your humour is very different on stage. I was like, yeah, it's yeah. very different to the humour of Clifford the Big but Red well Dog. But well done for Clifford the Big Red Dog, because, you know, you're getting these roles now, and that's and that's a very challenging, I know you can't talk, talk too much about it because of the sag strike and stuff, but mm. just the concept of being, of acting and doing well is, you and know, And smashing well Hollywood. How amazing is that? Yeah, and that's why I'm always, like, a little bit worried, especially when I'm doing things that are in that, like, family space. <laughs> just all of these <laughs> terrible jokes that I've told in my past that are sort of floating <laughs> out there the I still the, the job ether. on Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, God. Are we doing any more travels with Father? Uh, cool. With yes, I mean actually yesterday I started the first day of uh, uh, the shoot for this show that I'm doing for Netflix called Fatherhood with my father. Aww. See what I did there? Right. Uh, See what you did. Me and my father sort of uh, looking at kind of modern parenting. We went to the baby show in Kensington Olympia. Me and my mum. My mum was in heaven. I adore your mother. Oh yeah, Hillary. Send a Hillary. Never mind Vanessa. Hillary. I hope you're well. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> going well in life. Congratulations <laughs> on being a grandparent. You literally <laughs> just made her day. <laughs> no. She's going to be at home I with Michael Hillary. She's so sliding nice. off the sofa. She loves you, I'm sure. Oh, she's wonderful. How, how are they finding being grandparents? They're amazing, yeah. My mum's my very hands-on. She was a doula. She's very knowledgeable. Oh, wow. She's very oh, helpful. Wow. She knows everything you could possibly know about breast pumps and breast pads and nipple shields. And, and your dad. And, <laughs> and my dad is not uh, as well-versed on uh, the world of breast pads and breast pumps. Uh, he's <laughs> He's a little bit more uh, hands off as a grandfather, but equally, like he can be quite Still affectionate loves. when yeah. he wants to be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jack, thanks for coming. We're right, very excited. It's so nice to see you. It's Tickets for the remaining day to Jack Wahill. Settle down are uh, on sale Settle now. Down. Thanks, Jack. You didn't give that message to Vanessa, but it's fine. No, no I might leave her a personally. private message in her dressing room. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. With, with no. my leftover shepherd's part. <laughs> <laughs>